Hey guys, this is Chris with CNM Aquatics. Welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about euphilia, mainly hammer corals. A little bit of frog spawn at the end. So euphilia and hammer corals are an LPS, a large polyp stony coral. They have a calcium carbonate skeleton or base that grows up. And this particular hammer coral is of the branching variety. I tend to stay with the branching varieties over the walled varieties. I think the branching are a little easier to care for. They're a little more forgiving when it comes to water chemistry. Plus they're a lot easier to cut and propagate for aquaculture, which is one of the main things I'm interested in. Hammers, they have these long protruding tentacles that come off of the skeleton. It gives a nice fluidity, a nice movement to aquariums. This particular hammer has green polyps coming off with purple tips on the end. And you can see on some of the end of the polyps here, they kind of intersect like a T, kind of like a hammer shape. And that's where they derive their name from. It's from the shape of their polyps. This is also the same type of coral. It's a branching hammer. It's got the green polyps with the purple tips on the end. You can see on the stalk here, he's got little little heads protruding out of the skeleton. So those are actually new heads forming coming off the skeleton. In general, hammers tend to do well. Um, low to medium flow, you don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. If you get it too high, then it pushes all the tentacles to one side. If you're pushing all the tentacles to one side of the coral, then I'd say your flow is too high. If you're starting to expose the skeleton and you're putting stress on the polyps, I haven't necessarily torn them with too much flow, but they definitely retract and recede. You don't get the nice extension. And I like the, the nice extended look on the polyps. So if you have a nice gentle waving motion, like in this frame here, your your flows your flows just about right so flow is important for several reasons um, one aesthetically it gives a nice movement to the tank and two it helps to circulate the water around the coral so it exports waste and it brings nutrients to the coral it's kind of a, a give and take it's kind of how they exchange nutrients we touched on flow a little. Another important aspect to consider when caring for these corals is lighting. They do well in lower to medium lit areas of the aquarium. They don't so much like the bright intense lights, so if you throw them under some metal halides or something like that, they're probably not going to do as well. They do best under the medium lit areas of the aquarium. They do give off a nice fluorescence under LEDs and some T5 lighting. This green tipped hammer, you can see is really glowing under these LEDs and it adds a nice waving neon kind of aesthetic to the aquarium. The corals, they, the hammers come in a variety of colors from brown to bright green. You can see here, hammers can be pretty aggressive when it comes to coral warfare. So you want to give them enough room from other corals. They do have a, a pretty good stinging capability. Now, if you put a hammer next to another hammer, yeah, they do still sting each other, but it's not as critical as them stinging another, another species of coral. They do have a, a strong sting, so just keep that in mind when placing them in your aquarium. You can see here these, these elongated tentacles. They're called sweeper tentacles, and they're stretching out, trying to sting other corals. So just keep in the back of your mind when you're placing them in your tank, just keep them away from other corals so they don't sting them. And try to remember these things, they will grow, so they will expand, so give them plenty of room to expand and grow. I do want to touch a little bit on feeding here. We are feeding some reefroids to this hammer. I found that hammers they're not really the most aggressive eaters. So I, I tend to try to feed a smaller 
particulate food like the reefroids. I, I have noticed some better coloration and faster growth when doing so. I'm going to show three different types of food here. So starting off with the reefroid, it's a small, pretty much a powder particulate. And you still you see it floating around the hammer, but you don't really see it feeding actively. And these are the coral frenzy coral pellets. You can see them just collecting on the polyps here. Now hammers, they do have mouths, but you don't really see them pulling food in like you would an anemone or a Duncan for that matter. They really are not the most aggressive eaters. Hammers get most of their nutrients from the lights. They're photosynthetic and have zoosynthelly and the symbiotic relationship. So they get most of their nutrients off of the, the lights on the, the aquarium. The third food here, this is some meaty parcels of squid. And it's pretty much just laying on top of the thing. You can even see the, the coral pellets we fed before. This guy really hasn't done anything. He hasn't made much of an effort to eat any of it. You can actually see his one of his mouths here on one of the one of the heads. He's making no effort whatsoever to bring the food in. So it's probably best, I think, just let them feed all out of the water column. If you got fish in the tank, then they're gonna pull from that and they're gonna get some nutrients out of it on their own when they feel like it. I don't recommend feeding like this in your tanks you're you're gonna get some algae growth so we're gonna we're gonna blow this guy off with a power head you can see the coral pellets have just kind of slimed over here or slothing off I don't want all this food sitting on this guy forever so we're just gonna blow it off and other things in the tank will eat it This here, this guy, he's not a hammer, hammerhead. He's a frog spawn, and he is still a euphilia. This is of the branching variety. He's still got the purple tentacles with the green tips. They're very similar to hammers. They have a lot of the same care requirements. The frog spawn, they like the lower light, the medium, low to medium flow. They have the same wave pattern. They had a nice fluidity to the tank, nice movement. Um, these guys aren't fully extended, they're a little contracted, but if you're trying to identify the difference between a hammer and frog spawn, you can look at the, the tips on the end of the polyps. They look like little frog eggs. And that's how they get their name, is frog spawn, because they look like little frog eggs. So pretty much the same eating habits as the hammers. I like both of them. They're, they're both um, very popular in the aquarium community. I appreciate you guys watching. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos come out. Until next time, I appreciate it.